morning. I spent a lot of last night printing out um, 31, yeah, 31 comic pages on my um, Canon Pixma. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to look it up. I'm sorry, it's early. I didn't sleep very well. I wanted to get this done first thing because I got a lot of other stuff to do today. It's a um, Canon Pixma 9000 Mark II. I've had it for a few years. It's kind of on its last legs. Um, but it is really good for printing large format blue lines on heavier paper. <clears throat> The ink is water soluble, so when I stretch my paper, all of this is gonna go away. So you need to pencil your blue lines before you stretch them, otherwise you're gonna lose them. And um, if you check my blog, this post should have a tutorial, the post about making comics, or rather the series of posts about making comics will have a tutorial for how to um, change your line art to blue lines. Let me see. Looking for my roughs. So the last stage I showed you, my pages look like this. They're just penciled roughs on copier paper. Very cheap, very easy to do. And I printed these out on um, 11 by 15 Canton Montval watercolor paper. It's not the best watercolor paper by a long shot. It is, however, affordable and it runs through my printer. And I can afford to do a long form watercolor comic on this paper. It is the best paper I can easily access that is affordable. That is in the right size that will go through my printer. A lot of things it has to meet. And um, I've got 31-ish pages here. So that would be three packs of 12 sheets. It comes in packs of 12 sheets. Um, they're gum bound, so I just, no, tape bound. So I just pull them out and run them through my printer. And what I like to do is I like to do all the panel borders first in pencil, because I just pencil this and then I paint over it. Um, I like to do all the panel borders first and then I pen pencil the pages themselves and then I paint in large batches, uh, four to six pages at a time. And it takes me about three days of steady work to complete each batch. And I'm putting them in this envelope for safekeeping until I can get to them. Now I wanted to demonstrate something else to you guys today before I get to penciling and that is why you need to um, why you need to pencil your pages. So let me get that set up and I'll be right back. So if you don't know how to stretch watercolor pages and you're looking for a tutorial on that, I highly recommend you check out my, um, it's like an hour and a half long video from Mechacon 2014. Myself and Heidi Black did a panel on watercoloring. Um, and in that I do a live demonstration of how to stretch pages. I also have a tutorial on my blog if you're more of, um, if you like to follow along with photos and text rather than trying to keep up with a video. And I can link that in the description and in a card here. So the reason you want to pencil this, this is scrap, uh, misprint page, it printed too large. Um, you need to leave enough room so that the tape can really grab the paper so it doesn't buckle too much. And this one I didn't. Um, and I'm just going to apply some clean water the same way I would a wash. Um, let me zoom in. And it's kind of hard to see because this is so faint, but I hope you can see that the blue is running and it's running a lot. And the way I stretch watercolor paper is um, I'll do like an initial wet down and then I will use a Viva paper towel to get that up and I'm doing that to activate the ink and get it up. As you can see most of it is up now so by the time I do a second pass it's going to be pretty much entirely gone and that's why you want to um, pencil your pages before you stretch them because otherwise it's going to be almost impossible to see what you put down and it's going to be very difficult to work and if you don't pencil at all if you just want to add color you're going to very quickly lose track of what you are doing so uh again i recommend you pencil or you pencil and ink um your watercolor pages before you start stretching them 
Uh, doing borders on your pages is a pretty simple affair. I have a sturdy 24 inch Aluma cutter ruler. It's lasted me about seven years now. Um, I think it'll probably last me the rest of my life unless the backing gives out which is quite a possibility. Um, and I like to pencil my watercolor pages with a mechanical pencil with um, an HB lead. And I usually, or I used to like drawing with harder, I mean softer leads because you can get um, a darker line with less effort. But I find that they smear as soon as you add the water. Um, and I didn't like how that made my uh, watercolors look kind of muddy. So when I'm penciling borders, before I paint, I just go over it with a pencil. I don't even really worry about necessarily making my borders uh, very thick because I'm going to go over them again when I'm totally finished with everything with uh, color coordinated pencil colors. To, uh, just sort of, sort of um, pull the page together. Uh, a lot of watercolor comics, it's, um, for me, as a reader who used to very much enjoy uh, classic children's books, the way watercolor comics are often handled pulls me out of the experience because there are constant reminders that, hey, this is a comic with like harsh uh, panel borders that don't match the line work within or lettering that is very stark in comparison to the page. So I worked really hard to um, have my page be a cohesive whole that looks like a classic children's illustration. And you can check out examples of my comic pages up on my blog. So that's pretty simple. Just the panel borders on the cover. So I'm gonna grab a slightly more complicated page. And I usually do all of the panel borders in one day. I don't usually do them at my desk. So for these kind of panels where there might be a panel border break right here where um, these two panels meet, I'll leave that blank. That's kind of a preference on your part, whatever you choose to do. You can leave it solid, you can break it. I mean, really comics are a lot about finding what works for the story you're telling. So the advice that I am giving here works for my, I feel like it works for my particular story, which is a children's comic with um, a little girl as the main protagonist. But if you're doing something for teens or for adults, you might want a starker approach. I pulled in too much, I'll pull out. I mean, your real goal when you're doing borders regardless of your, the tools you're using, unless you're doing it digital, and then it would be a little bit different, is to make sure your um, ruler is flat on the desk and square with your page, because you want to put down a straight line the first time. It's just easier that way. And I'd actually go into trouble to square my panel borders when I was doing my roughs, so I can um, just sort of quickly rule them right now. I don't have to be as careful because I did that work in an earlier stage. Really the whole point of having a multiple stage comment process is to make um, the stages that come after the stages where you're less able to make corrections easily, to make those as easy as possible and to go as smoothly as possible. And um, comics are a lot of work. I love making them. I love reading them, I love writing them, but it is definitely a sacrifice. I have had to give up a lot of other things I enjoy to be able to do this. Because they are very time consuming. And, and financially consuming too, if you're doing um, conventions and you're trying to find like work in the industry. And um, I like to use, uh, I use a lot of convenience watercolors when I paint these pages because um, mixing consistent colors for every page would, um, it would just take a really long time. You don't need as many colors as I use. Again, I'm just using convenience colors so I don't have to mix them every time. 
and I am sorry about the grinding noise. That's the sound of a metal mechanical pencil against metal Alumicutter ruler. Let's see. Usually I keep a little stick eraser handy, but that isn't in arm reach, so I'm gonna grab a click eraser and a drafting brush just to knock off those crumbs. So I have shown you how to do a basic panel border with the cover, and I've shown you how to do a slightly more complicated page. I'll check in with you guys again when I'm penciling these pages officially. All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye.